We're going on an adventure today. I'm gonna to take you to my favorite secret spot, and by the time we get to that secret spot, you are gonna know every last thing you need to know about GMOs and tea. Let's get going. Oh, I'm Dylan, and this is another episode of This Month in Tea Science with Wu Mountain Tea. Now we can go. Let's get you a quick fresh wrapper. You and me, each of us have 25,000 genes in our bodies. And all of the information of these 25,000 genes is encoded in four letters. Kind of like this stop sign that I'm at here. You take those four letters and you spell stop, you have one meaning. But you can take those four letters, rearrange them, and you got post, tops, pots, ops, and those all mean completely different things. If I see a stop sign that says post, I ain't stopping. So it's the ordering of the four letters that makes all of the difference. That is what a stop sign and your genome have in common. What they don't have in common though is that the word stop is four letters long, whereas your genome is three billion letters long. Within those three billion letters, there is a lot of really strange stuff going on. Sometimes we have little segments where the same letter or the same two or three letters will repeat again and again and again. You might have a T, 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 T or a ta, 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 or maybe a cat, 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 cat. Cat, cat. These weird sequences of repeating DNA are called simple sequence repeats. And in the Stone Ages, they used to think these weird segments was junk DNA. But with the recent advances, we have started to realize that these weird SSRs actually have really specific functions that really dictate how your genome is expressed. It kind of turned out that these stuttering pieces of DNA are actually really important. Now the other really important function of SSRs that are really relevant for this conversation today is their use as markers of the genome. You can use them to trace and track genes that are inherited over time. So here's what I want you to do. Pretend that you are a tea farmer in Bangladesh, okay? Put your Bangladeshi tea farmer hat on just for a moment here. Okay, now we are on a tea farm in Bangladesh. We have a problem on our hands. The salty seawater from the Bay of Bengal, as sea levels are rising, this salty water from the Bay of Bengal is creeping up the river into the watershed of our tea plantation region. And that's bad because tea plants don't love salty soil. Well, let me correct that. Some tea plants hate salty soil and other tea plants can kind of deal with it. In that latter group is what we call salt stress tolerant tea plants. As Bangladeshi tea farmers, we want to get ourselves some salt stress tolerant tea plants, basically ASAP. We are gonna call the Bangladesh Tea Research Institute and they should be able to help us get some salt stress tolerant tea plants. Hello? Bangladeshi Tea Research Institute, how can I help you? Is this the Bangladeshi Tea Research Institute? Yes, it is. It is. Good. I badly need some salt stress tolerant tea plants. What can you do me for? All right, bet, my friend. <laughs> Let me conduct a real quick study. Awesome. Awesome. Greatly appreciate that. Looking forward to hearing back from you. We'll be in contact. <laughs> Good, that's good. I got the footy. The video should be out in two days. I'm talking about genetic modification in crops and salt stress tolerance and things like that. Is that a real thing, dude? BTRI? Man, let's go. <laughs> BTRI till I die. So now what our friends over at the Bangladesh Tea Research Institute are going to do is they're going to scramble out. They're going to get 1,000 different tea plants with 1,000 unique genomes. They're going to wrangle those plants in. One. Too. And then they're gonna add salt to the soils of all those tea plants and see which ones survive. What they're gonna find out is maybe 50 out of those thousand survive the salt in the soil. These 50 out of a thousand are super, super salt stress tolerant. Now, by sequencing the genomes, guess what else they found? That these 50 tea plants have a special SSR on chromosome 10 that the other 950 tea plants didn't have. Now we realize, oh my goodness, a cat, 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 cat on chromosome 10 and tea plants confers salt stress tolerance oh my god oh my god now us as Bangladeshi tea farmers all the tea plants that we plant from here on out all are definitely gonna have that cat 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 SSR because that's gonna give us the salt tolerance that we need in our tea plants and lo and behold our friends at the Research Institute have saved us the Bangladeshi tea farmers from lost yields 
and poor tea quality due to salt stress in their tea plants. Imagine this for a second. You're not a Bangladeshi tea farmer, but rather you're a Kenyan tea farmer. Kenyans don't have the same salt stress, stress issue. They're not on the Bay of Bengal with rising sea levels like the Bangladeshi tea farmers are, but they have their own problems. They have heat stress, right? It's hot as heck in Kenya on these tea plantations, and these tea plants can easily go through heat stress. Say you're a Japanese tea farmer. The thing you're worried about is cold stress, right? That's way up north. You got these brutal cold winters coming in. What if your tea plants get frostbitten, right? So you need very cold stress tolerant tea plants if you're a Japanese tea farmer. And wouldn't it be great if for all these different types of resilience, for cold stress resilience, heat stress, salt stress, for all these resiliencies, wouldn't it be great if there's an SSR marker for each and every one? Then, if you're going to plant tea in these areas, you can just use these SSR markers to pick tea plants that already have the genes that are most resilient to the climate conditions that you're facing in that area. So what we're describing there is functionally relevant SSR markers. They're SSR markers that specifically mark genes that have very specific important functions. And the tea science article of January, my friends. Yes, it was a long roundabout route, but finally, finally, we get to the monthly tea science article. This month, published in Nature, highest impact factor science journal in the world. The topic of this article was the discovery of a whole slew, over 400 brand new, functionally relevant tea plant SSR markers for all types of functions, everything from aroma to flavor quality to all types of stress resilience. This is a massive, massive contribution to the tea science field and to tea farmers all around the world. By the way, we are walking up to my secret spot right now. I'll give you a look. It's not quite the same in winter as it is in summer, but I actually kind of like it more. It wouldn't be fair if I didn't bring up GMOs directly because after all, that is the title and thumbnail of this video. And if I talked about GMOs in the title and thumbnail and didn't talk about it in the video, that would be clickbaity. And I'm not clickbaity, am I? Right? I deliver on my promises. I told you I'd take you to my secret spot, and I did. Look at us now, walking up on the secret spot. So here's the deal with GMO tea. Tea plants have proven to be extremely resistant to genetic modification. Essentially, when you're trying to modify the genome of a plant, you need to take the foreign gene, right, the foreign DNA that you want to put into the plant, you got to stick it into a bacterium, or sometimes a virus. These are called DNA vectors. And then you need to take that vector and stick it into the plant and hope that the plant takes up that foreign DNA and puts it in its own genome. But each and every time that people have tried, and oh, they have tried, scientists way smarter and way more savvy in the lab than I am have tried time and time again to transfer DNA into tea plants. And every single time the tea plant rejects the foreign DNA. It turns it right down. It doesn't take up that foreign DNA. And the reason is most likely because tea plants and tea leaves are loaded in these polyphenols, these catechins specifically. And these catechins have antibacterial and antiviral functions. Their purpose in the tea leaf generally is to stop bacterial and pathogen infection. So when you take these bacteria with the foreign DNA inside and you try to stick in the tea plant, these catechins and these polyphenols just shoot the thing down, just bomb it, attack it. It's like anti-aircraft artillery. Artillery. that poor foreign DNA goes down in flames. I can see why it's kind of ridiculous if you go to the supermarket and you see non-GMO label on the package of the tea. It's like, oh really? You didn't do the thing that nobody has ever done before? I'm proud of you for not doing that thing that zero people have ever done. But how does that information tie into functionally relevant SSR markers? Well, we can't make GMO tea currently. Someone probably will figure it out at some point. That's what I would guess. There's a lot of really smart people working on it. So chances are good it's gonna happen one day. But for now, in the face of climate change and in the absence of genetic modification of tea plants, we have these awesome functionally relevant SSR markers. Now this study that came out this month, there has been some studies similar where the goal is to find functionally relevant SSR markers, but this one kind of took it to a new level and they did it on really important genes. So now we have this catalog of what to look for when we go out into the wild and look for natural tea plants so we can find one that have all of the qualities that we want. Without GMO tea, we still have this awesome knowledge about SSRs that are gonna allow us to overcome the challenges presented to us by climate change, which if you're in agriculture, you have a lot coming your way because the climate's getting weirder and weirder. It's getting hotter. It's getting colder at times. Frosts are more severe. Droughts are more severe. We need to optimize our plants to be able to handle these stresses because mother nature is a beast and she's not happy with us right now. So we need to give ourselves the best chances we have at growing food. Looks like I can't fly the drone today because we are within a 15 mile radius of the DC International Airport. But God, look how close we are. 
Oh, here's the river we're on right now. And that, oh, we're so close. The drone didn't work out, but I did bring one last thing in my bag of tricks here. Teapot, a teacup, some tea. Basically, the only tea science nature article of January was a publication reporting the finding of 400 plus of these functionally relevant SSR markers in tea plants that will be used. Oh, wow. Love that. It's a bug bitten black tea. So they are going to be extremely important in picking the best cultivars without using genetic modification. That's going to give us better, healthier, more resilient tea crops. And that's going to make more delicious, more delectable tea. A win-win. It's a win for the farmers and it's a win for the consumers who might be afraid of GMO crops or GMOs in their diet in general. I'm having a great time in my secret spot, by the way. Thanks for coming. That's it for January 2022. I hope you learned a thing or two. I hope you had some fun. If you did, you could like the video, subscribe, share it. A lot of ways you could support Wim Mountain Tea. Most importantly, until the next video, I want you to stay healthy, stay positive, and keep sipping tea. One love. The tea plant just shoots it down like friggin' anti-aircraft artillery. Probably like my drone would have been shot down if I flew it up in the air today.